Welcome to the Orthopedic Indications channel, where we discuss medical education for medical sales consultants and reps. Welcome to Indications. My name is Nick Strasser, um, and uh, <clears throat> on this channel, we kind of break down some different cases and a lot of education uh, focused on uh, orthopedic surgery, particularly foot and ankle surgery, but really um, try to focus it uh, towards those who are in medical sales but hopefully has some tips that can uh, be helpful for all sorts of uh, individuals in the, in the healthcare field. So this video I'm, I'm titling it Five Key Points for Fibular Nailing Success. Uh, as we get into summer, we know that there's gonna be more trauma and more cases to be managed. And um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, the fibular nail is a nice option to use, particularly if you're concerned for soft tissue irritation or um, in the setting of concern for wound healing, um, especially some of these high energy traumas. But I think there's some, there's some nuances to using it and it's maybe not useful in all sorts of situations, but certainly it can have found some tips that have, that can be helpful. There's, there's been a little bit of debate back and forth, whether it's in the literature, uh, in terms of the utilization or usefulness or, um, success rates compared to plating, traditional plating. And then there's been some, we call it Twitter wars, maybe back and forth between people who are advocates of using the fibular nail and some who uh, say that it can cause problems. And so like anything, there's probably a, a variety of opinions and options for it. And these are just some of the things that I've used uh, with, uh, with doing, using some fibular nails that I think have been, that I've learned uh, over the last um, several years. So tip number one, um, we tend to think about doing these as percutaneous uh, cases, but really not being scared to open and clamp the fracture. I'm showing a case here, not mine, but a case here where the, I don't believe that the fibula was ever really reduced. Um, and so you, 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 you will open, will clamp a tibia, will open, will clamp a femur. Certainly reasonable to open and clamp the uh, fibula. So I think that's my first tip is don't be thinking you have to entirely do this percutaneously. If you need to open it, there's nothing wrong with that. A couple centimeter incision. You still have the, at, the advantage of not having anything directly underneath that in terms of hardware. So I think that is one nice option that you can use uh, for these uh, cases. Tip number two is keeping your clamps up. So when you're doing this, if you put a clamp on there, if you put the clamp down towards the foot, as I'm showing in the crossed out section here, uh, your outrigger on the fibular nail will hit the clamp and it won't allow you to advance or you'll displace your fracture. So in this case, we wanna put the clamp headed towards the head so that it stays out of the way of the outrigger. And most guys will call this out. And most of the reps that you work with are gonna call this out, but if it's your first time in on this case, and you put the clamp on and it's down, you're gonna run into problems eventually, so you will have to fix it. Easier to do it right uh, the first time. Uh, tip number three is getting your starting point right. Um, and I also uh, thought about calling this use your tools, um, but you wanna make sure you get that start point right, um, where you get it um, kind of inside there. If you stay too far lateral, you're gonna ream out the lateral wall. If you stay too far medial, you're, gonna, you're, you're not gonna have um, a good fixation so you want to keep that get that start point right and there are some tools that you can use to help facilitate this whether it's the gatling gun which gives you kind of this um, couple millimeters of offset uh, to place another uh, guide wire uh, in place that's one option um, or um, using the uh, intramedullary reduction finger so sometimes the, that that k wire even though your starting point's correct it wants to hit that uh, medial cortex of the fibula so you can open it up distally and then you introduce that uh, intramedullary finger and then advance the k wire up into the canal of the fibula so some tools to help facilitate that but you got to make sure your start point's correct um, tip number four once you go and put your fibular nail in and you introduce it into, into the um, intramedullary canal, uh, get your rotation of your, of your fibular nail correct based off the syndesmosis. So what, and what I mean by this, my, my language I used in this descriptor in this slide is a little bit, a little bit funny, but basically what you want to do is um, set it up as if you're going to be fixing the syndesmosis. You may not know at this point, but what I will do is I will introduce the, introduce the um, nail. So in this case, this is an Arthrex nail and I will 
before I deploy the talons or before I fix it distally, no matter what the system is, I will put a guide wire through the syndesmosis slot to make sure I like where it's gonna end up on the medial cortex. Um, because otherwise, once you get it set, you can't adjust it. So that's one thing I think you have to think ahead of a little bit that you wanna get that rotation right because your fibular nail will, dial, will dictate what your, the position of your syndesmosis screw is gonna be on the you know, in terms of the axial alignment. So you want to set that beforehand. And it's easier to set it then and then adjust it and fine tune it. And then in this case, what I would do is I would um, get it in the right spot with this provisional K wire through the syndesmosis. I'll put a couple of extra K wires in the accessory holes that are in the outrigger. Then I'll back that wire out. I'll introduce the screwdriver, this white handle screwdriver to deploy the talons. And now my rotation will be set. And then I'll go ahead and advance that 1.6 millimeter K wire back across. That, that way it kind of holds that fixation for me. And then I'll get my distal fixation. So thinking about that in terms of uh, just knowing that once you, once you fix some of the interlocking screws, uh, or if it's a talon or that uh, proximal interlock, um, you will, um, you can't adjust your syndesmosis trajectory. So you want to dial that in beforehand. All right. Tip number five is using your soft tissue guides, um, making sure, you know, they're there for a reason, making sure that you introduce those and protect the perineals and being aware of what you're working around. Um, just to, it, it helps facilitate, um, uh, the passage of your, um, of all the instrumentations, it keeps you from uh, grabbing the surrounding soft tissues. So go ahead and use your soft tissue guides because the perineal tendons do live in close proximity to the distal aspect of your starting point. And then tip number six, this is a bit of a bonus tip. Um, this is, I call this the Besh maneuver. And this has been talked about, this is not original, This, but this is if you're using a tightrope in particular, is put the, put the red tab towards the foot and let that that the button fall, you know, fall downhill or fall away. It seems to want to let that sit in a lot more flush position. And then the other thing that you can do is inject a little periosteum underneath the periosteum with a little bit of marcaine or lidocaine to create a little bit of a bubble right where that K wire comes through. I use a, um, uh, I use a cannulated technique. So I will use a K wire across the uh, syndesmosis. And then once the K wire gets through the medial cortex of the tibia, I'll meet it with a, uh, a, 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 uh, my 18 gauge needle and I'll inject just a little bit of local underneath the periosteum, creates a little bit of a bubble, and then you can let the, the, the tightrope uh, button fall into that space. So those are my tips for fibular nailing. If you have tips below, you go, or tips, go ahead and put them in the comments below. would love to hear them and uh, how you uh, can make this uh, procedure successful. Take care.